Hello everyone and welcome to episode 85 of Legacy Gaming with Atari Man 71. Before I begin, I'd like to remind everyone to play the games you have. It's great to grow your collection, but remember to play the games you already have. I'm doing these streams and recordings because I have an extensive collection and I really hadn't touched it in almost 15 years. Try not, try not to collect these like they're trading cards, which is what I was doing. They're made to be played, so I think you should. I'm playing mine and I'm having a great time. And I think it's good for the cartridges too. Keeps them clean. I just want to add that if you enjoy retro gaming or legacy gaming as I'm calling these games and videos like this, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm active on all three platforms under the name AtariMan71. On this episode, I'm going to be playing four games which were published by M Network. The game titles are Frogs and Flies, Super Challenge Baseball, Astro Blast, and Dark Cavern. So the first game on my list is Frogs and Flies. Do you see that there? So I will put that in my Atari. Turn on my video capture card. And turn on the game. Okay, so this game might start by itself because if no one's playing, um, the uh, computer takes over. Yeah. So it's going to play by itself, but that's okay. We'll go over the information while it plays by itself. So Frogs and Flies is cartridge MT5664. It was released in 1982, and it uses a joystick controller and, as usual, Wicko Command controller, my favorite. I recall my best friend had this game when, I was, when we were kids. Uh, I remember playing it at his house, and I don't know if uh, it was a game he had borrowed from another friend, or a relative, but I do recall playing it. And I did add this cartridge to my collection 15 years ago, but never really played it though. Each game starts out in the morning with the light blue sky, and there is a, a second player. The system will, if there's not a second player, the system will automatically take control of the red frog within a few seconds. Each frog jumps from one lily, pa lily pad to the other. During each hop, the number of flies there are a number of flies around the screen, and if you push the red fire button, um, it'll cause your tongue to come out, and you can catch the uh, insects. And basically, you earn a point for each insect you catch. Um, let's see. As, as the game progresses through the day, the sky turns a darker blue, and then eventually it becomes nighttime, and the sky turns black as the day ends. About a minute after the sky turns black, the two frogs jump off the lily pads, leave the screen, and the game is over. And uh, the firefly comes out, and it, and it has a banner saying, The End. And it's kind of cute. Um, it's definitely a family-friendly game. Um, and then the frog who has captured the, uh, the most flies um, is the winner. You know, it's the most points. Uh, there are two different levels to Frogs and Flies, and uh, on the first level, the jumping and landing points are fixed, and you need uh, you need to time their jump to catch. You need to time your jump so you can catch the flies, and uh, so that it goes in your flight path. On the second level, you're free to move about the ground and catch flies, and the jumping and landing points are not fixed. So you can even cause the frog to jump into the water. In that case, the frog will swim back to the nearest pad. Generally, uh, you want to avoid jumping off the pad because it takes several seconds and you lose several opportunities to get insects. The difficulty switch can be used to make the game easier or hard. In the A position, you can actually jump off the lily pads and wind up in the water. Uh, in the B position, it's not possible. So VGR ratings for this game, the graphics are rated three for decent and the playability is four for fun. So we can uh, we can reset the game, and I'm going to play it in the easy mode first, so I'm going to make sure it's in the easy mode. And we'll see. So now the computer took over. There I got it. Yeah, it's two points per, per 
per fly you catch. So in this one, there's only one height you can jump to. play the other game because the other game is a little more difficult catching up to me. Normally in practice I was beating this guy two to one. Ooh, he got two there. Or I did, I don't know. Later in the day. So this game is only three minutes. So it's not too much time left. That's usually my final score is 32-16. Broke my high. 34-16, so I got an extra one. So there's the firefly saying the end. So let's uh, let's put it in the A difficulty. And so in the A difficulty, you can adjust your angle of your jumps. So you can jump in the water. So there we see him swimming. Wow, you can jump really high. This is a thousand times more difficult. He's killing me. I'm spending a lot of time swimming. It says you can move along the ground, but how do you move along the ground? Oh, I got one. No. <laughs> Every time I get a fly. I'm in the water. Dang it. Come on. 
come on. I suppose. the worst when you get one and he gets one. Nighttime. There we go. He's gonna win. Yeah. He's gonna win. So that's basically it. Frogs and Flies is a very simple game. Um, it is hard in the in the A difficulty though. Something to get used to too, because I was jumping in off the water all the time. So I'm gonna take that game out. Set it aside. So the next game I have on my list is Super Challenge Baseball. You can see that right here. There we go. Focus. So I'll put that in. Turn the game on. Okay. Call up my information on this baseball game. So, Super Challenge Baseball is cartridge MT5665. It was released in 1982, and it uses two joysticks. So, again, in addition to my Wickel Command Control, whoop! In addition to my Wickel Command Controller, I have my Commodore slash Amiga slash Competition Pro joystick here for player two. So. Earlier I had mentioned that I had played some Atari baseball game uh, with some of my friends. And I do recall playing baseball. I do recall playing baseball made by Atari for the 2600. But I went to practice this game and it seemed oddly familiar to me as the baseball game I remembered playing as a kid. And this is more like RBI baseball for the NES. And I do know that game uh, was the only one I remember playing in childhood because one of my best friends actually had it. But the gameplay for this is just too familiar to me of not have played it as a kid. So I actually did play this game. I didn't have it. I don't know who had it, but I played this against somebody because the fielding is very similar to RBI. Um, it was very similar. And I was actually playing this one person playing two players um, just because, you know, that was, you know, how I was able to practice it. And I'll, I'll play, you know, maybe an inning or half an inning or something. Um, the game follows most of the professional baseball rules and allows you to control all of the players on the team. You can throw a variety of pitches. You can throw curveballs to fastballs. You can steal bases, tag players out. You can bunt, you can try a home run, um, and you can even, oh, in the event of a tie, the game even goes into extra innings. Several difficulty levels are available, which control the game speed, whether or not stealing bases are allowed, etc., etc. You can actually control each fielder in the game individually. You push the button on the joystick and then push up once or twice. Once is the infielder, twice is the outfielder. And left and right do the same thing. Um, so you can actually pick the different fielders to get the ball. And you don't have to run all three outfielders. I mean, that was that was something that I remembered specifically. Um, 
And so, um, so in the A difficulty, you can control the lead runner and send them or hold them up. In the B difficulty, all players advance automatically. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just basically do that. I'm just gonna put them all. I'll put them back in the B because we switched it to the A for the uh, frogs and flies game. So the difficulties switches are in the B. So VGR didn't rate this game, and potentially it's because it's a two-player game, and so you know, it's uh, it's not something that uh, that he rated a lot of two two-player only games. So like I said, the uh, I put the game in the B difficulties, and I've already got a strike for, on this batter. Um, so the batter is player one, and the pitcher is player two. So the home team is up to bat first, or maybe you're the visitor, I guess. So I'm going to throw a pitch here and see if I can hit it. Um, let me do my pop-out screen because that's a little better for me. Okay, so here we go. Baseball by myself. Throw it back to the pitcher. Oh, he's out. A little rusty. I haven't practiced it in a while. There we go. So now he's just going to stay at first base, so I'm going to have to activate the third baseman. Whoops. Get the ball, and then throw it back to the pitcher. And so throw a pitch. That's a nice hit. Infielder has the ball. And you can throw guys out. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. And I'm just throwing slow pitches here. Ooh. Too late. That was close. That was close, man. I almost got him. So I scored a run, threw it to second, didn't get the guy. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try to field. I haven't really tried to do that before. I just... Throw it back. There. Probably should have thrown it home. Maybe would have got the guy at home for a double play, but... Did get the guy at second. So, is that one out? Oh, two outs, first inning. I had a strikeout. Tried. That was late. Ooh, if you hold that stick down, that ball comes in fast. Let me do that again. Ah, I thought I had the ball. Thought I was going to get three outs. Oof. So now it's changing sides. Fielding with the wrong guy. I was trying to field with my uh, batter. Could have got a double play there. Good thing, too, because I was trying to field with the wrong stick again. Ooh, strike three. 
two outs. Three outs. And I don't know if that was caught on the fly or if that was just a force out at the bag. So play a little more. Ooh. Pitcher can't uh, field, I guess. The red team is definitely better. Pulled the wrong. I pulled the joystick back. That's not what you need to do. Uh, I tried to throw it home and I threw it to third. Ah, I tried to throw it to first. You only got one run. Okay, so I'm going to switch the joysticks because honestly, foul ball. That's good. That was third? That would not that was not my intention. Oof. I know Ty goes to the runner, but switch it back to the top of the stick because I accidentally pushed the button and deactivated him. I would have had that guy at third. Oh. Now I'm used to using the button. That's uh, just a nightmare. Okay. Now I threw it to second, not the third. I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. There's no outs in the second inning. Oof. Trying to throw it the second I pushed up on the... Jo I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that is um, Super Challenge Baseball. It's hard to play by yourself, but you see there's fielding. There's there's all sorts of aspects to the game. It's actually more like real baseball than, uh, than most other games. So the game is 4-4. Four to four. I'm going to call it a tie. It's the second inning. Um, I just 
leave it at that. Um, so I'll take that game out because you can play that game forever and you know by yourself, and it doesn't really do too much. So the next game I have is Astro Blast. There we go. Focus a little bit. So I'll put that in. And I believe this game may launch automatically. No, it does not. Okay, good. I'll call up my information on Astro Blast. So Astro Blast is cartridge MT5666, and it was released in 1982. And this game is unique in that you can use the joystick controller or the paddle controllers. And yeah, I have my paddle controllers out, so I'll try it with both. Um, so I do not recall playing this game as a kid, and I don't recall anyone having this game. And then this is another game in my collection, which, you know, I bought and just never really played it, unfortunately. And I can say, after playing it in practice for the stream, it's actually a pretty fun game. It's actually pretty challenging. And as time goes on, um, you know, you probably will get better at it. Now, I have not played this with the paddles yet, so we'll see how I do. You know I don't really like paddles, but it has automatic firing, so with that, uh, you know, it, uh, it might be okay for me. I won't have too much difficulty. Um, so you start uh, the game with 10 lives and uh, an array of things to shoot at as they descend. They look like asteroids, and they break up kind of like asteroids. Um, and uh, your ship moves horizontally and features a single rapid-fire cannon, which you shoot up at the falling asteroids or meteorites or whatever you want to call them. Um, and you may think 10 lives will keep you going for a while, but it, it's actually um, it's very difficult because there's so much stuff hurtling at you. Some of it goes fast, and there's big rocks that split into two when they're hit, and so then you have to shoot those two. There's spinners that can be shot, or if it lands, it costs you a life. There's pulsars that are bombs that hone in on your base. Shooting them equals eight big rocks. A UFO appears after scoring 20,000 points. I've not gotten over 250. Um, and destroying them equals 10 big rocks. Uh, you earn an extra life. When your peak score goes over a thousand, peak score, yep. Scoring is pretty unique in this game. Um, you know, there's different values for each thing that you hit, but you lose points when rocks land on the surface. So you might find it difficult to keep your score above zero. I do. Um, it is actually a very difficult game to play to score a lot of points. And your peak score is your overall score, and although your score doesn't really go up above zero, you need to be pretty aggressive to get a high score. And I honestly, man, this game, they come at you. And uh, as your score increases, the background color changes to indicate the level you're at. Targets fall faster but are worth more points as your score climbs. So this game is only for a single player, and it's very unique in that it can use both the paddles and the joystick. And like I said, I'll try both. I've not played it with the paddles yet, so you'll see my first attempt at it. Uh, the right difficulty switch in A is faster version of the game, and, and in B is the normal game. The left dif difficulty switch is for automatic fire. Um, if it's set to B, it is manual fire. So that's the right difficulty. So let's put that to A. I thought, so it may automatically shoot. I didn't do that. I just had to hold the button down. So maybe with my hand being as bad as it is, you know, it will, uh, it will help. So VGR ratings for this great game. The graphics are rated three for decent and the playability is four for fun. So I'm just gonna play this game in the, uh, the B difficulty for the left and the A difficulty for the right, which I believe will give me automatic fire, which I've never used in this game. I've always pushed the button, had to hold the button in. So let's see, let's see how it goes. First, I'm going to do it. This is with the joystick.
This is crazy. This is crazy. Oh, crap. Yeah, that was the thing. Ugh. You have to shoot it or you, you lose a... Man, they are just coming at me. I tried to get over to that thing. So I'm still having to hold the button in. 300. That's the highest score I've ever gotten. Let's try it again with this automatic fire. So the beep beep is the things that hold in on you. I tried to get over to that white thing. The slow things are obviously easier. Yeah, so you see... Oh, crap. I saw it. Mm. Man, this is killer. Should have gone over just a little bit. Ugh. Is that the last life? That's it. 670, so definitely improving. I'll try it one more time. I was doing so good at the beginning. Uh, and now it's just everything is at zero. So, the advice I'll give you, and I keep forgetting it. Man, there were tons of those fun. I must have gotten a free life. Jeez. 870. So I saw my score get up to 870 at one point. Um, the thing I've noticed is watch your cannon at the bottom of the screen because if you don't, things are going to hit you. Try one more time. Mm, try to get over to shoot that. So desperate to shoot that thing. See there, I wasn't looking at the bottom. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Ooh, UFO. Thousand points. Got a thousand points. Yeah, this game is pretty addictive. Ugh. But frustrating. What hit me? What hit me? Uh. There's so much stuff coming at you, and it comes. And this is the regular game. Let's put it to A and let's see how crazy this game, this game can get. So let's put it to A difficulty. I'm not going to last long. 
Wait, A is slower. A is definitely slower. Yeah, but there were two of those there. The thing I hate about those things is if you don't destroy them. Okay, maybe it's not. Last life. Oh my god, I'm terrible. 470. Okay, so I'm going to shut it off because I'm going to connect the paddle controllers. See how that goes. So as for the automatic fire, um, it did not automatically fire. So that's a way to uh, know which paddle controller you have. Got a little rattle in it, something's broke. So I'm gonna put it back to uh, I'm put them back to both B difficulty. Maybe I had the difficulty switches wrong. This paddle doesn't work. Hopefully this one does. This game is definitely more conducive to a paddle controller. So, I have a feeling it's the right, I had the difficulty switches reversed. Yeah. 275, let's try it again with the paddles. Mistake. I should have just let it fall. Off. Hmm. I'm terrible with paddle controllers. Uh, Should have got over a little more. 140. So, let's put them both back to A. Uh, 
And the thing that's the worst is the score is not cumulative, so you lose points for everything that hits the ground. I mean, I guess that's as, almost as good as what I was doing with the joystick. And that was actually the fastest level. They were really falling in that. So, um, But that's Astro Blast. It's actually a pretty fun game. Uh, you know, it's unique in that it can use both the joystick and the paddle controller. And so this is the only game I know of that is capable of that. And uh, there are a lot of games where I've thought, you know, it would be better with a paddle controller. But... Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of them, but they, it does work on these horizontal shooters. Um, I've seen it with one other game before. I can't remember what game it was. Let me move these paddle controllers out of the way. Toss them over there. And find my joystick now. Plug for that. Ah, the joys of wired controllers. You know, I'm playing my Xbox as well. And I'm playing Fable on that right now. And, you know, it's got wired controllers. I do believe they did make some wireless ones. And we may have some, ones, some somewhere. Um, I know we had them for the Xbox 360. But uh, we may have some for the Xbox as well somewhere. So the last game I have for this episode is Dark Cavern. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, I'll put that in, turn it on, and I will call up my information. And so Dark Cavern is cartridge MT5667. It was released in 1982, and it uses a joystick controller. And I did not have this game as a kid, nor did I know anyone that did. And again, I purchased this as an adult 15 years ago, and it basically sat in a box until I started doing these streams. Um, it was at that point that I, that I, uh, started playing the game in practice for this recording. So I really have not got much experience with this game. Dark Cavern combines the single maze screen formula of Pac-Man with the man against robot aspect of Berserk. And it kind of actually has the feel of, um, Wizard of War in a lot of ways. Maybe not quite as, as dramatic as Wizard of War, but it's actually similar. So you basically run around the maze and shoot robots uh, that enter from the holes on the side. And the robots can only shoot forward. So if you go where, to their head side, they will shoot you. And no doubt about it, you're not going to get out of the way. Um, you, can, you can shoot them, but it's from behind. Now there are other things. There are blobs that come up, and I can't remember what the other thing is. But there's, there's a couple things that basically stun you in the game or take your bullets away. And you have limited ammunition in the game. And, you know, a gun appears on the screen and you can pick up 10 more rounds of ammunition. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's actually a tricky game. you got to follow and run behind them and, you know, shoot these robots from behind. Because otherwise you're going to get killed and the game's going to end quickly. And so, um, uh, if you've played Pac-Man or, or Berserk before, you'll probably feel like you've already played this game, um, because the maze never changes, you know, there's hardly any sense of progression, which, uh, which makes maintaining a prolonged interest difficult, you know, it's, it's just like, you can run through this maze, but it's like Pac-Man. You know, you can run through it a bazillion times, and it's basically the same thing. And uh, like I said, for me, this, this game is similar to Wizard of War by CBS Electronics. The left difficulty switch controls the difficulty of the game, with uh, the A difficulty being more difficult, and the B being the easier. So I'm going to put it in B, because I switched it to A just now. Or the last game, so I'm gonna switch both of them to B. Okay, so VGR ratings for this game the graphics were rated three for decent, and the playability is four for fun. I don't know if it's four for fun, 
but it's a, it's a decent game. Okay, so uh, like I said, there were there were insects in the game. Those paralyze you if you touch them. The blob, which is like a lightning bolt, um, that actually steals your bullets from you. So you don't want to touch the blob. You can shoot both of them and make them go away, but in general, um, you know they're problematic. So I will just reset the game and start. And then enter the cavern. You just push up. So So now I can get behind that guy. Got him. Purple robots aren't worth that many points. Ah. He killed me. I killed him though. And they try to shoot you. Uh, I thought there was a wall there. That's gonna be gone by the time I get down there. Ooh, we got ten more bullets. Oh, come on. just doing terrible so I'm gonna start again and this is on the easy level so like I said I've not had much chance to play this Ooh, bullets up top Let's see if I can get to those I was hoping he's uh, bullets would disappear Bullets. So when they're red, they're worth more points. Oh, I got bit. Stole my bullets. Ah. So I think I got two lives left. Ah, oh, crap. I didn't see that one. I was focused on the other one. Bullets. I got one left, so.
No. Ah! That's game. 16,000 points. Got a little better that time. I just kind of abandoned my philosophy. I changed my philosophy on playing this game. So I got five lives, 20 bullets. Now that's bullshit, because I shot. Colors, yep. Mm. Mm. Three of them. Stole my bullets. Ah, all to try to get those. I always turn purple before I shoot him. Ah, that was a waste of a life. That's game. 21,000. I don't know. There's not that much more to it. Like I said, it's kind of a repetitive game. Um, we can switch the difficulties and see if that makes the game any harder. I know in the A difficulty, what it says is the uh, robots are two-headed, so they can shoot in either direction. So I might not shoot too many of them in here. I 
I was just focused on the gun. Yeah, they can shoot behind him. I got one guy. So they shot each other. I guess the bullets last longer because those stayed in there. I've managed to shoot one. Two now. <laughs> and that's it. I, I shot two. So basically I got lucky. Um, I suppose with more practice, you know, that, that higher difficulty level may be a... Uh, a better game to play for a lot of people. So that's my episode for today. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I know I'm not the best gamer out there, but I'm trying to bring you some information and some gameplay from my extensive collection. I'd like to remind everyone that even though we may be through the worst part of the pandemic, I want you to be healthy and stay safe. And I think it's still a good idea to wash your hands and social distance. I appreciate you taking the time to, to make watch me play these games today. I stream on Twitch Friday, Saturday, and Sunday under the name AtariMan71. The videos from the stream are then released on YouTube the following week. I will be streaming Atari again on Friday of this week with six new games. I will follow those games with my Fable Friday gameplay, which I'll play Fable for Xbox, the first Fable well, Fable the Lost Chapters for Xbox for about two hours after I finished streaming my Atari games on Fridays. Thank you again for watching and have a great day.